Hi, and hope you are doing well. I'm Jody, and today we have the big news of ACM Turing Awards. It's kind of a Nobel Prize in computer science. ACM has named Andrew Barto and Richard Sutton as the recipients of the 2024 Turing Awards for their work on reinforcement learning. They started their work and publications in the 1980s and created the mathematical foundations and also developed the important algorithms of reinforcement learning. In this video, I will talk a little bit about the award, we'll talk some about the reinforcement learning, and we'll show you some coding, some libraries where you can start educating yourself more and more on the subject. But this was very interesting. The award is $1 million, comes from Google, but the main part is recognition of their long, long, long work on this field. Many of the things we know nowadays is kind of related to their work, to reinforcement learning. To summarize, we can have different kind of artificial intelligences. One is supervised learning. You will give me lots of photos from a cat and lots of from photos from a dog. I will try to learn the difference. You are telling me, this is a cat, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a dog. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands of these. And then you give me a photo like this one and ask me, what is this? I would say this is a cat because it has this funky mustaches, like this. Okay, I had lots of samples, I was supervised, and I learned to do something. Another method is unsupervised machine learning. You have lots of different met customers, some do have lots of money in the bank, some do lots of transactions, some has a very little money with lots of transactions. You just give them to a computer and say, Categorize these people in three different stacks. I said, okay, this is one, this is one, this is one. I recognize three. Then I give you a new customer and you would say, okay, based on the features this has, it is part of your good loyal customers. This is here, a small one. Something might not be in any of these. This might be a hacker or something, a bad hacker. This is unsupervised learning. You have not categorized this for me. You just gave me some data and I categorized them for you. These are just samples. But what is very important nowadays and changing AI dramatically is the reinforcement learning. This is what happens in real life for real people and real robots and other things. The point is when you want to teach a child to walk, you would never start teaching them by saying, okay, put your leg here, then move your leg here. Now do your hand like this. Now you are uh, walking. No, you just tell them, come here, come here, come here. I have a huge ball. This is very fun. Come here. I have food or whatever. And the child will try to come to you. It knows, or he or she knows, or whatever, knows the target. They know that if they start from here and reach you, reach you here, they would get this beautiful ball to play with. So they try, they just do something and see the result. They know that, okay, I tried to use my hand and I fell down here. So this was not good. Next time I will use my leg. Then I will try to this. Then I will try to walk and this kind of stuff. It's trying something getting feedback, seeing the rewards, seeing the punishments, and retries and retries and retries. This is what uh, the fundamental of reinforcement learning does. You have an agent here and you have an environment. So you have the agent, you have the environment. Then you have some actions. Action space can be moving leg, moving left leg, moving right leg, moving hands, for example, and looking. And each time you do this, you interact with the environment 
and you get some feedback here in the form of rewards or punishments which is lack of rewards and also some observations you are observing the environment what you are changing in the environment then if you repeat this so you have some actions here your agent does some actions on the environment and gets back the rewards and some observations if you repeat this for thousands and thousands of times you will start walking really this is what happens in real life and this is what happens in many of the cool AIs, AIs you see around I will show you a code of a lunar lander you have a lander it has some trust here so you can go up you can go right you can go down and the target is landing between these two poles so you just do random things and see what happens then you learn that this was kind of good so let's repeat it let's repeat it let's do a new random thing because there are two problems if you know how to get some score you will start doing that again and again and again but you should look further so sometimes your system should do random things too to learn new things try new things this is exactly what happens with our walking when you are a child and you start just crawling using your hands you are reaching your goal but you don't stick to that sometimes you do random things you try to use your leg and you get better and better results this is also what happens in robotics when you're teaching a robot to walk to grab something this reinforcement learning is amazing also in self-driving cars in chess in AlphaGo you can see the results everywhere even on ChatGPT the famous ChatGPT in the first phase it uses lots and lots and lots and lots of text whatever text it can find in the whole world to generate new text so it compiles all of this you give it a word another word another word and it starts giving you the next words this is good but not good enough in the second phase it says okay I got these words I gave back this but the user was not happy about them and just closed the window or told me that you are wrong you are telling me nonsense so it's reinforcement it tries to maximize its rewards in the real world it sees your reactions it sees if you are continuing if you are happy with the rewards and does the reinforcement and plays this times and times and times till it makes it answers better uh, there is a book by these guys it is called reinforcement learning and introduction many of the great textbooks call themselves an introduction if you found a book which says reinforcement learning everything you need to know in five minutes you know and here I'm going to show you some code anyway uh, let's go to the code but before that I will quote from senior vice president of Google Jeff Dean during the award and this is Turing award considered as a Nobel in computer science he quotes Turing in a 1947 lecture Alan Turing said what we want is a machine that can learn from experiment and this is exactly what happens in the reinforcement learning if you want your first reference if you are going to study deep should be reinforcement learning and introduction I have not read this but I have studied OpenAI's library OpenAI do has a great library it used to be called Gym but now it's called Gymnasium it's a fork of the Gym by Pharma Foundation but at, at the moment this is the main thing people use to learn about this stuff or even implement them see here uh, we have a moon lander here it has some thruster it has a goal and it has a environment it creates a policy to maximize its score each time in every single frame you can calculate a score what is the velocity what's the status of the different landing gears what is the distance from the goal if I've exited the whole planet and these can give you failure signs or some scores 
the system should try to do this again and again and again and maximize the scores. What happens is it creates a table. You can have different strategies. If you study that book, you would see, but you can have, for example, Q-learning. It creates a table. It saved this state, expected results, what happened. So it knows in this situation, what should I do? What I did, what happened? Should I add some random to see what will happen? And starts maximizing its efforts. If you run this million times, it would know all the situations and their good answers, how to land. This is what happens in reinforcement learning. Let me show you some code. But before that, this is a very, very, very simple one. A gymnasium is the general library, but for example, in this case, you need some 2D representation. So this is a 2D representation of the environment. That's why you should install the box 2D version. It needs Swig. If you are on, for example, Ubuntu, just do apt-get install Python 3 Swig or uh, apt-install Swig. And then you can install this one, box 2D. Here you can check everything. First, it has different 2D samples. We are going with this one, but this one is also very cool. It's a car, tries to learn, and a robot. But the lunar landing, you can see what I've told you is represented here. Action space is discrete four because you can do four different things. Zero, do nothing, left, right, and the uh, one below, whatever it's called, orientation engine. Observation space. You can see where the word is, where I am, and where are these. And also you have a score. And you can create the whole thing with this one because it's predefined. If you study this documentation, which is I did, you can know how you can create your environments, how you can define everything. For example, rewards is here. Every single frame is based on these rewards. Reward is increased the closer or further the lander is to the landing pad is increased by 10 points for each leg that is in contact with the ground decreased by 3% of the point each frame side engine is firing you prefer to fire less so if you run it a lot it will find the solution but in the example we saw here we had a code. I have it here. Uh, I've called it simple. Here, we don't have any learning. You have this, you create the environment, and you said reset the environment, so create a random environment for landing. And this is me. I draw it awfully. Now it's better. Uh, reset it with some random and then do one action here our action is in the environment action space so only four just a sample so choose a random action every single time and get back run the step with that action on this environment and get back observation reward if it's terminated if truncated if terminated or truncated if you're dead or finished just reset the environment. No learning here for you. Boring. We will go to the learning soon. If I run this, that would be Python. Simple. You can see every time it just does random things and gets back the result answer, but it doesn't learn. If you want to add a learning strategy, it should go here. So let's break this. Uh, I have another sample here. I was playing with this. So we have NumPy. Uh, here I'm using QLearning. If you want to know about the basics, you can go with uh, QLearning. Okay, Wikipedia has a page. This is it. This is technically the algorithm for learning. Every time your Q table based on this state and action is updated with the previous state of action you had. 
So we need to understand the state and see the outcome. Uh, obviously, we cannot learn from this one. Wikipedia is too much conceptual, difficult to understand, and you don't need. To, it's not a lear first learning place. It's a reference, but you can find lots of things there. What it does, technically, this program. This is my loop. See, first it creates states by this criticizing the state. What this does is discretes the state because normally everything is a float number. So it says, let's create a discrete thing from my current state and create a queue table which is the data structure that stores the expected future rewards for each state action pair. So I create an state action pair here. Practically, I create some specific discrete points and some discrete actions and say, my lander was here and I did this. So I reached this uh, future reward which I expect. And based on that algorithm, I'm updating this each time. Also, the point is I should not do exactly what gave me better chance, better scores on the previous tries. I should try new things because I need to learn better and better, just like a child who can go to the goal using hands but tries to go using legs and fails, but it's a good fail. You should try it. That happens here. I say if my random is smaller than epsilon, do a random thing. Otherwise, try to argmax whatever is in your table. Try to find the maximum of this table for your current state. This is very, very cool. The problem is this needs lots of memory. Very, very memory incentive if you are creating huge things. If you run this, that would be like this. And as you can see, this time it starts learning things. It's very clear even from now, but it adds random and it's outputting its scores. Scores is minus 200. Hmm, this was good. Minus 58, minus 14. It's getting better and better, as you can see. But it does random things, so it can go off. But if you run it a thousand times, it will start learning and doing better and better in different situations. We discreted on that upper function all the, sorry, all the points here and actions related. So. It takes a lot of time to fill all of this, but it goes from one of these and it knows the result. It can, it can tell that this was my result. Do I need to make them better and does them better and better each time? So this was what I wanted to show you. I highly encourage you, if, encourage you, if you are interested, to go through uh, gymnasium documentation. It has a very, very nice... Uh, introduction and then how you can train an agent exact thing i was telling you and then talks about how you can train an agent and how you can create your custom environments anyway same thing is used to create dota agent and many many different games my friend was arguing was complaining that there is no background good background on ai this can be a start have fun and continue learning.